So one, obviously one of the biggest questions surrounding this election is, is simply, is America ready for a black president? And I won't purport to have the definitive clear answer to that question, but I do think there are a number of interesting and, and promising signs. So one of the biggest trends in, in American politics over the last 50 years or so has been the growth of minority elected officials uh, all across the country. We now have about 10,000 African Americans in elected office around the country. Uh, believe it or not, about 40% of Americans live in a metropolitan area that's had a black mayor or in a state that's had a black governor. So um, I, I believe and I argue in, in my book that this widespread experience with black leadership has had consequences. And the, con the consequence is it's sort of lessened white fears about black leadership and then perhaps about other minority leadership. So if we, if we go back to the 1960s when the first black challengers were running for mayor and other positions, they faced uh, almost overwhelming white opposition um, there was a lot of fear. So, for example, when Tom Bradley ran to become uh, mayor of L.A., there was fear that the police force would quit en masse. There was fear that uh, there would be uh, racial integration of white neighborhoods. Um, and in response, there was tremendous white mobilization across these cities and oftentimes very racist campaigns. So in Newark, for example, the slogan uh, or the one, of the one of the candidate, white candidate asked, uh, or, or stated whether we survive or cease to exist depends upon what you do on election day. In Atlanta, the slogan was simply, uh, Atlanta is too young to die. But many of these African American candidates did get elected, as I've said. Um, what's interesting is what didn't happen after they were elected. There was no radical pro-black agenda. The world under black leadership was strikingly similar to the previous world under white leadership. And I make the argument, and I think there's now evidence that that experience uh, lessened the fears of many white Americans. So if we look at uh, electoral results in the 60s, something like 83% of white voters voted against these uh, successful black mayoral challengers. Um, every decade since then, more and more white voters have been willing to support uh, black challengers. And, and the proportion, uh, while not a majority, has doubled. So in the 1990s, 34% of white Americans were supporting black mayoral challengers uh, in large cities. That's the, the positive story. There is obviously some uh, ongoing evidence of white resistance or, or resistance. Um, so if we, in national polls, ask white Americans uh, about African Americans, many still hold uh, serious stereotypes about African Americans. So they, they believe that on average, African Americans are less intelligent, uh, more prone to welfare, more prone to violence. Some, some large proportion of Americans in, exper in experiments uh, whites tend to rate a fictional black candidate um, as less able on several different dimensions than a uh, similar fictional white candidate. If we also go back and look at the primary, there's, there's I think, more evidence that race mattered, at least on the margin. So uh, in polls in, that, uh, in, in a number of states, uh, about one in five white voters said that race was a factor in their, uh, in their choice, in their decision. Um, and if we look across states, white support for Obama was lower in states with large African American populations than it was in other kinds of states. So, um, so some mixed evidence, what do things look like now moving forward? Uh, in national polls, a little over 40% of white Americans say they will support Barack Obama in the national election. Um, to me, that means that race actually still matters on the margin. Uh, Obama's white support now is a little less, about 5% less, than the typical white Democratic nominee for president would get, say, uh, uh, Kerry, Gore, uh, other recent Democrat, white Democratic nominees. You add to that the fact that Obama is in an incredibly strong position. We have an, uh, a very unpopular uh, Republican incumbent. You have uh, uh, an economy that's, that's faltering, if uh, maybe a little bit on the upsurge now. And you have uh, an unpopular war. So you would think that Obama would do uh, significantly better among white voters than previous uh, white uh, Democratic nominees. He's doing a little bit worse. So um, that suggests, I think, that race will be a factor. On the other hand, uh, the bigger picture is, I think, uh, it's very likely he will win unless something dramatic happens. Um, and that's largely because of uh, uh, sort of lessening white fear and strong minority support. So he has over Obama has overwhelming black support. We're expecting uh, very high black turnout. 
Obama's doing uh, well among Asian Americans who are favoring him about two to one. And he's also doing well, as Marissa indicated, uh, uh, among Latinos who are also favoring him about two to one. So he will likely lose some white votes because of race, but that will be more than compensated for by uh, my, uh, sort of exceptional minority support in this election. Um, the other thing I just wanted to briefly mention is if we look at the, the local picture, one of the things that I think uh, is the most significant trends that explains in, in part um, some of the things Steve was saying about trends uh, uh, is that in the county uh, and a little bit in the city, the biggest trend is really the growing Latino population. So since 2000, uh, the Latino population of the county has grown more than 17%. That growing Latino population is overwhelmingly Mexican in origin and it's largely democratic. So um, uh, we are shifting more and more towards the left. And Steve is, is absolutely right uh, that that hasn't changed outcomes all that much yet. And, that's, and Marissa's right be, uh, because of the underparticipation of Latinos. But the numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And even with Latinos underparticipating, as their overall size grows, they are inevitably going to have a bigger uh, impact. And while so, so the short term is we may. Uh, get some pro-Republican outcomes. Uh, it looks in the long term with growing immigration, continuing immigration, that we are uh, uh, moving to the left and, and will stay to the left over the long term. Which